Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to go over 10 low level monsters that are pretty easy to kill that are actually very profitable. I would recommend having between levels 50 and 60 in all of your combat skills to be able to kill most of these monsters. Generally killing lower level monsters does not yield much GP per hour but these 10 monsters actually have valuable drops because they're annoying to get to, have uh, small requirements, or they're just used for higher level content. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. Coming in at number one is Brine Rats. Now, Brine Rats have a requirement of level 47 Slayer as well as you will need to complete Olaf's quest. Um, they're both pretty low requirements and I recommend maybe between uh, 50 and 60 in all of your melee combat skills. Having access to the Fairy Ring network is useful but not required. So if you go to the Fairy Ring DKS, go a little north and dig by this tree, you'll get into the dungeon with the Brine Rats in them. From here, you just need to run a little bit to the north and you should see them just in the corner of the screen now. Now they have one extremely valuable drop, which is the Brine Saber. Right now that's worth about 600,000 coins. However, besides that, they have a bunch of other valuable uh, and consistent drops. They'll drop Raw Shark, uh, Swordfish, Raw Lobsters, Death Runes, Blood Runes, and very consistently. So I have the actual uh, loot tracker open here and we can see how consistently these drops add up. The first drop was 10 Raw Lobsters, which is worth 2,000 coins. The uh, second drop here was seven death runes. Like it just all adds up and it's very consistent. Now I'd recommend melee because you don't want to be spending extra money on runes or ammunition and you don't actually even need to bring that much food. One tip is that they drop uh, raw swordfish unnoted very frequently. So when you're running out of food, pick up the raw swordfish, run outside of the cave and a little bit to the west is a fire and you can cook it on there quickly if you have the cooking level for swordfish otherwise they really do not do that much damage and you can just teleport back with the draymond staff now depending on your combat level i was getting around 300 to 400 000 coins an hour here um you'll probably on average get a brian saber every two hours if you're a higher combat level maybe three hours if you're a bit lower so a very good method overall now coming in at number 9 is another very unique way of making money with combat and that's killing Skogers or Zogers. Now to get access to this monster you will need to complete the quest Zogre Flesh Eater. And the reason these are so good is they have a 100% drop rate of the Ogre Coffin Key which ranges from 2,000 to 4,000 coins. However, beyond that you can just open them right here because the chest is right beside it. Now I'd recommend ranged or magic. However, there's one catch. These can only be damaged via certain spells or at least you'll get a heavy damage reduction if you're not using certain methods. I'm using the Ogre Compo with Brutal Arrows and this is reasonably quick. However, it has the slowest attack speed in the game, which is unfortunate. The other option is using the Crumble Undead spell. It kind of comes down to what your range level is. If you have a low range level, definitely use magic. If you have a high range level, use ranged instead. Now they also drop Zogre Bones as well. However, I would focus on picking up the Ogre Coffins, but you can see just in the bottom left, that is where you open up the coffin. At 2k a key, you're definitely going to be on average profiting by opening these keys, as well as it will extend your trip because there's a lot of junk items you can drop. You're really looking for a few items, and if you don't get it, you can just drop it. And another benefit is you're so close to Castle Wars. I think this might actually be about 400,000 to 500,000 GP per hour. If you're just banking the keys, you might be able to sell them for about 3k each. A really good method. I kind of want to try this for a couple hours sometime. Maybe we'll make a video on that later. Next up here is a pretty well-known method, and that is killing green dragons. Now, the easiest way to do this is with ranged. I would bring a rune crossbow with broad bolts. However, you will need level 55 slayer for those. Otherwise, just bring mithril or adamant bolts. So you want to bring uh, cheap ranged gear because it is in the wilderness, so you don't want to bring any expensive gear. Bring a full dragon hide set of whatever ranged level you can afford. I have black dehyde, an anti-dragon fire shield, as well as an amulet of glory. Uh, also, a looting bag will be extremely useful as well. I like to come to the western dragon spot because I find that less people will PK here. There's a lot more people and bots around as well, so there's a lot more fodder for the PKers to go for. You may not have to teleport out so frequently. So every kill is going to be worth around 4.5k because you're going to get a dragon bone as well as a green dragon hide. And at higher range levels, you can probably get 500k to 600k an hour just from killing green dragons. The XP per hour is not great, but it will still get you a fair amount of melee or ranged experience. Those are the two combat styles that are best to kill these. I find range to be the easiest and just generally easier to bring more cost effective items for. It's one of the most popular and tried and true methods and you can do this at a fairly low level. At 50 range you should be good to go as well as uh, 50 or 60 in your melee combats. Obviously having higher levels than any of this will be useful but as a baseline that should be fine. So this method is only possible with the elf teleport crystal which I don't actually have 
but I thought I would put it in here anyway because it's pretty easy to show what you need to do. The reason you need the elf teleport crystal is where we're going is the underground pass and we're killing the disciples of Ibn. Now it's a really low level monster and all you need to do is start Morning Ends Part 1. You get it at the very beginning of the quest. I hurt my wrist really badly um, so I can't do it. That's my excuse anyway. But if you do have that quest done, if you come over to the underground pass and you kill the disciples of Ibn, they have a 100% drop rate of the Zamorak monk's robe bottom and top. You want to bring a super anti-poison with you as well as a full graceful will be useful. It's possible to get poisoned on the way so we definitely want to bring the anti-poison. So you just want to keep killing the monks until you have a full inventory of the robes. You will have to hop worlds once because there's not enough uh, monks here to get a full inventory in one world. From here you just want to teleport back to clan wars. Uh, regenerate your run energy and then teleport back with the elf crystal. You can get around 400,000 GP an hour depending on the prices of the robes. It does have a higher quest requirement than some of these methods but the actual fighting is easy. They're only like level 17. They die in one shot sometimes and you can kill them with melee or ranged. You can see that inventory alone was worth 26,000 already. Next up here we have another classic method and that is killing Chaos Druids. Now they are in very low level wilderness in the Edgeful dungeon. You can kill them easily with ranged or with your melee combats. I'd recommend at least level 20 range before you start killing them or at least like 20 or 30 in most of your melee combat stats. They're very low level monsters. The reason they are profitable to kill is because they drop a lot of grimy herbs which Renars alone are worth about 8,000 coins. Now like I said it is in low level wilderness and there is some people here that will dress up as chaos druids and hope that you attack and skull on them. So I would generally not recommend bringing uh, expensive gear even though it's in such a low risk level of the wilderness just in case you're not paying attention. So that's why I would recommend a range gear because it's a lot cheaper and a lot more cost effective. You can bring a rune crossbow or you can bring a magic shortbow or you can bring any level shortbow that you can wear at the time. Also, a looting bag will be extremely useful because you're going to be getting a ton of different types of herbs. I would expect you can get between 150,000 to 200,000 GP an hour here, but considering they only have 20 HP, they barely do any damage and it's very low risk, I'd say it's a pretty good introductory money making method. A another unique way of making money by killing low level monsters is killing the ice runs on the island of Nidaznaat. Now the reason this is kind of effective is because there's actually these honor guards here that will help you kill the ice runs and all you need to do is get the last hit. Now these ice runs drop rune warhammers, rune kite shields, as well as they have a chance of dropping the granite shield, as well as a bunch of other kind of smaller, uh, somewhat valuable consumable drops. And since you only have to get the very last hit, you can go and hop through worlds, get the last hit on a few monsters, and then continue on. Now what you will need for this is Fremnic Isles completed. You will need the Fremnic Round Shield or else they're going to be doing a lot of damage to you. But at the same time, they are tanking most of the damage. You're not going to be needing much food or anything. I would recommend melee or ranged. And if you're around 40 or 50 in either of those skills, you should be fine because you don't even need to do much damage to these runs. Because again, all you need to do is get the last hit on them. This is going to be very bad XP per hour. So if you're looking for any experience rates with this, I would recommend not doing this. The GP per hour here is probably not going to be that great either, maybe 100,000 to 200,000 depending on how lucky you are. Now this next monster is actually a low level boss and that is the Crazy Archaeologist. I've recommended this quite a few times in some of my lower level videos and there's a good reason for that. All you really need is Ivan's Blast or even a higher level strike spell. If you have around 50 to 60 magic you'll be able to kill this thing fairly easily. His drops are pretty lackluster when you consider the realm of most boss drops. But he's dead easy to kill and does have the chance of dropping a few drops over a couple hundred K. Now the easiest way to get here is with the burning amulet and you go to the bandit camp and run up. Now if you're looking for a more in-depth guide on how to kill the crazy archaeologist, you don't really need it. All you need to do is pray range, attack him with whatever spell you could afford, and the only thing you need to dodge is his three books that he will throw when he says reign of knowledge. Now he says taste of knowledge a few times which always tricks me up. Now if you miss they will do some damage. So you just want to bring some prayer potions and some food. Now if you are feeling extra risky you can do this in the bounty hunter world and you'll have a 1 in 5 chance of dropping a mysterious emblem but there's almost always someone there so I just recommend a regular world. So there we go he is dead and 3k coins. That's a sucky drop but still something that I recommend for anyone who wants to do some lower level PVM and get rewarded for it. You are probably looking at 300k an hour here. Definitely not amazing for a boss but pretty great for a low level player. Next up here is another method that a lot of people do pretty frequently and that is killing blue dragons. It is a bit lower risk than blue dragons but I think overall the GP per hour is going to be less unless you have some higher level requirements. Now blue dragons are most easily accessible in the Taverly dungeon. There are no requirements to actually kill them here. I'd recommend similar gear to that of green dragons. However, if you are going to be paying attention and just looking for profit per hour, I'd recommend killing green dragons 
they are weaker and have less of a requirement to get to because running through the Taverly dungeon without the agility shortcut can take quite a while. That being said, if you're looking for a method that requires less attention, killing blue dragons is going to be pretty good. Their average drop is around 5,000 coins because you're always going to get a dragon bone and blue dragon hide. You'll probably average around 300,000 to 400,000 GP per hour here. It's really hamstringed by the fact that you have to run all the way in here, assuming you don't have a high agility level. I'd recommend range gear once again, with a rune crossbow and broad bolt being totally sufficient, so you probably need around 60 range to be able to kill these semi-efficiently. Back in the day, this used to be my go-to money-making method, and that is killing Ankus. Now, the easiest ones to access is in the Stronghold of Security. Now, they're not as good anymore because Pure Essence is worthless. However, they still drop a lot of Death Runes and the Blood Runes. Now, the easiest way to kill them is with melee. However, there can be a safe spot in another part of the dungeon if you want to range them. I'd recommend around 60 in your melee combat stats to kill them. They're a decent XP per hour. You can get them as a Slayer task, and you can probably get around 150,000 to 200,000 coins an hour. Definitely on the lower end of some of these monsters here, but considering that they're more of a staple monster, easier to kill, and they actually give decent XP per hour, makes them a viable option. And last up here coming in at number 10 is another kind of unique method, and that is killing tree spirits. Now, the only way to access this is with the fairy ring code BKQ, so you will need to have at least started Fairy Tales Part 2. But besides that, the only other requirement is Fire Strike, which requires level 13 magic, and a axe, preferably a rune axe but any level axe should do. From here, you need to teleport to the fairy ring and run a little bit to the south. You need to start chopping a tree and a tree spirit will spawn. Now, if you run up a little bit to the north, you can actually safe spot the tree spirit, which is what I would recommend doing. Now, you're not gonna get any XP per hour here because your actual experience is gated by the actual monster, but it is very AFK. Once you start casting Fire Strike, it's gonna take you a couple minutes to kill. Now their notable drops are the Rune Axe as well as a bunch of Nature Runes. You might get 100,000 to 150,000 coins an hour here. If you're at a very low level, this can be decent enough. And again, you can AFK here for about two minutes at a time. Now on top of that, this is one of the easiest ways for an Ironman to get a Rune Axe and it's a very popular way to do it. But anyway guys, that is about it. Those are 10 profitable monsters that you can kill at a low level. If you have any other suggestions for lower level monsters that you might kill for profit, I would appreciate it if you leave a comment down below. I'll read through all of them and maybe make a follow up video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to go check out my Patreon. There will be a link at the end of the video. Thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.